Hey y'all, welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. I'm going to work some metric conversion practice problems. Now these practice problems come from the set that I assign in class, but even if you're not in my class and I'm not your teacher, these will be helpful if you're needing some help on metric conversions. Now just in case you're not in my class, just for your information, the range of metric prefixes that I teach on the large end, I start with Terra and I go all the way to Femto. Okay, make sure you have a calculator, something to write with, something to write on. You should be doing these practice problems with me. Pause it, try it, compare, see how you did. Don't just sit and watch and then expect to go sit and be able to do. You need to be doing while you're watching. Okay, seriously y'all, let's get started. If we have 1,020 teramoles, how many moles do we have? Mole is a base unit, mole. We wanna go from teramole to mole. I always start with writing my little mnemonic device with my little pattern of exponents. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, and even after I create it, you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure and watch this video that's linking up above right now. The great, mighty King Henry died by Drinking chocolate milk under nice, pretty flowers. Oh, I was worried I wasn't going to make that fit. B, that's my middle. That means my base unit. And I always put a zero here. And then the pattern is one, two, three. And then when you get to three, you count by threes. Six, nine, twelve, one two, three, six, nine, twelve. The, now I do have one more of the smaller units than I do the larger units, but the pattern stays the same. We count by threes, so this is 15. Okay, that's my little guide. That's my little cheat sheet. But you gotta be able to make it from memory, and there's my little memory device. Okay, let's get started. Gotta write our given. This is dimensional analysis. Make my cross. Bring my unit down. Okay, so I've got teramole on top, teramole on bottom. So I'm going to be going from Terra and I'm going to my base unit. Now I said this in the first lesson, but all of these, all of these exponents relate to the base unit. So the base unit has to be in every single step. Now this problem happens to be solving for a base unit. So we know we're only gonna have one conversion factor to create. But if we were going from a prefixed base unit to another prefixed base unit, we would have to have two steps, two conversion factors. We're going from Terra, mole is a base unit, so we are going to mole. I cannot strongly stress this enough. Before we look at numbers, let's think about which unit is bigger. The biggest unit gets the one. We've got one big thing and how many little things are gonna fit in it? We gotta find out the biggest unit because that's our one. Teramole, mole. This is in order from largest to smallest. So Terra is definitely the biggest, it gets the one. But I do notice there is a 12 by that T. Now we get to use it in the available space. And again, this is an exponent, one times 10 to the 12. My teramoles cancel out. I've got moles left at the top. I'm ready to put this in my calculator. Now I'm gonna use an exponent key. And if you need to know where this exponent key is, I'm gonna describe it a little bit, but if you need more, I'm gonna link a video right above that explains everything you need to see. So I'm typing in 1020. My next number is on top, so I'm multiplying and I'm typing in one, and then I'm finding the exponent key. On most calculators, it's a second function. Are you looking at your calculator? Look at it, look at it. Are you looking at it? Okay, it's a second function, and it's normally the button right above seven. So I've pushed second, press the button. Y'all, if you need me to wait, press pause. Now, the exponent key takes the place of times 10. It just means, hey, what's the exponent? My exponent is 12. So I'm typing in a 12. So in my calculator, that little portion reads one, tiny little capital E, 12. 
that is 1 times 10 to the 12 equals. My calculator automatically switched itself to scientific notation. My original number has 1, 2, 3 sig figs. I need to report the same amount of sig figs in my answer. 1.02 times 10 to the 15 moles. Let's do another one. Okay, this next problem, we have 2400 nanowatts. Watts is a physics unit. It's a unit for power. And we're solving for deciwatts. The first thing I want to point out is that we're going from a prefixed unit to a prefixed unit. We're going from nano to deci. But remember, these numbers represent the value when compared to the base unit only. The first thing we're going to have to do is because the given is 2400 nanowatts. Let me set my problem up. Got my cross. I went ahead and drew the line twice as long because I know I'm going to have to use two conversion factors because I'm going from a prefix to a prefix. Now what's on top needs to come down. I've not done that yet. Remember, I think the best way to get started with the problem is to write the given, make your cross, bring your unit down before you think about what comes next. Now we can think about what comes next. So we're here at nano and we have to, we have to go from nano to the base unit. If you're going to use these numbers that I'm giving, that's what we have to do. In the base unit, that was just watts. Just take off the nano and you got the W, watts. That's not where I need to go. I need to go all the way to deciwatts and I'm only to watts. So let's get the next conversion factor. What's on top goes on bottom. You might notice I'm setting up my next conversion factor before I filled in my first conversion factor. I really like to get the structure of the problem and then go back and fill in conversion factors. If you like to fill in conversion factors on the way, then go ahead and do that. That's just not my preference. So nanowatts are going to cancel. So what's on top needs to come on bottom because you got to keep your units diagonal. So if I'm here at base unit, if I'm here at base unit, now I just need to go right here to deci because that's where I was trying to get all along. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my very first conversion factor. Nano to base. Base to nano. Remember, the biggest unit's got to get a 1. Biggest unit's got to get a 1. Base unit is the biggest unit. The base unit is just the W. Watts. 1. I really think when you're making conversion factors on the bottom half of this scale, the small units, it's a tiniest bit easier. Only because the number you're going to use actually does go with the prefix. And so it's a little bit more intuitive. So we've got one times 10 to the nine, because remember it's an exponent. Okay, let's move to the next conversion factor where we have deci and the base unit. Base unit is still bigger. Base unit is gonna get the one, but base unit's on bottom this time. Remember base unit is the one letter by itself without the prefix. And again, I think when you're working below the base unit, it's a little bit more intuitive, and we're going to use this 1. 1 times 10 to the 1. Our nanowatts cancel. Our watts cancel. That leaves us with deciwatts, and that's exactly what we were looking for. Okay, I'm ready to put this into the calculator. 2400, 2400, divided by 1 second, my exponent key, and then I'm just pressing a 9. Remember, don't get caught up in the way I put it in the calculator. If you like to multiply across the top and write your number right here, and then multiply across the bottom and write your number here, and then divide, you're doing the exact same thing I'm doing. I don't know. I like to not skip numbers. I like to just go in order. So when I enter this into the calculator, I always type my given in first, and then I just let the problem tell me what to do. The number is on bottom. That means divide. So I've divided this number. But the next number is on top, so then I'm going to push multiply and then equals. You can do multiply and divide like that interchangeably on the calculator and it'll keep it all straight for you. But again, you don't have to do it my way. Okay, let me get finished putting this into the calculator. So I put this in, then I divided it, and now I need to multiply it. So I am typing in times one second, my exponent key, one equals. Now this time my calculator gave this to me in like regular notation, conventional notation. And there's a lot of zeros in front I think I would really rather write this in scientific notation, so I'm going to put my calculator into scientific notation. On my calculator, I'm pressing the second button, and then there's a button right beside it called DRG. When I press that, I notice FLO is underlined, and I'm going to underline SCI. 
If you have a graphing calculator, you just press mode and it's right there flashing normal, I think it's flashing on, and you just move it over to SCI and then press enter and then keep going. Okay, so when I get mine in scientific notation, I'm getting 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that would be in deciwatts. You could have left that at the decimal. Both are perfectly acceptable, unless you're not my student and your teacher specifically says not to. Let's do another one. The great, mighty, king, Henry died by drinking chocolate milk under nice, pretty flowers. Base unit is zero. I'm gonna go ahead and write base again. One, two, three, six, nine, twelve. One, two, three, six, nine, twelve, and fifteen. Okay, let's look at this problem. We have seven hundred mega newtons. Newton, that is another physics unit. So Newton, you see that they both have Newton in common. That's the base unit. So we've got capital M. That's mega, and we've got little d. We're going back to deci again. So we're going from a prefix that's larger than the base unit to a prefix that's smaller than the base unit. Again, though, prefix, prefix to conversion factors. Let's write our given, 70 mega newtons. I'm gonna go ahead and set my cross up. Again, I'm gonna make my line a little bit longer, and I'm going to bring my given unit immediately down. Now I'm gonna start looking at my problem mega newton and i know i have to go through my base unit so i'm not even going to give a whole little long spill again so i've got to make a pit stop right there so i'm going from mega to base mega definitely larger so mega gets the one again i do see the six right there that goes in the empty space one giant mega newton has one times ten to the six regular old plane newtons in it I just told y'all on the last problem, I like to set my problem up before I put the numbers in, and look what I just did. So, I guess if you like this way, here you go, because we're just going to keep it on going. Next step, again, what's on top comes bottom. These would cancel, so you can't use those again. Newton. So, we are still here at the base unit, but now we want to go to deci newton. Base is bigger. It is on top, one newton. And again, like I said, we're below the base unit. Tends to be a little bit more intuitive to go ahead and link the one with the D. Okay, so now my Newtons cancel. We've got deci Newton on top. I'm ready to put that in my calculator. So I'm typing in seven zero. That next number's on top, so I am multiplying times one second. My exponent key, six. My next number is also on top times. My next number is also on top, so I'm going to multiply. So I've typed times one, my exponent key, one equals. And so it's giving me seven times ten to the eight decinewtons. And if your calculator is not in scientific notation, you would have seven and then eight zeros decinewton. Both of these, again, acceptable answers. I will caution you, though, to be honest. When you write it out like this, it's so easy to make a mistake. This, you're not going to make a mistake writing this down. Here, you're going to make a mistake. Don't be afraid of scientific notation. Get used to it. You'll like it, I promise. I have another problem. Got 9,000 moles. How many centimoles? Centimoles. How many centimoles? I'm going to go ahead and write my given. 9,000 moles. That's my base unit. Remember, that's a chemistry unit. It means amount. We will be using moles a lot. I'm going to go ahead and bring my unit immediately down. Mole is a base unit. I'm going to centi. Base unit is bigger. Centimole gets the two. One times ten to the two. I started with the base unit, and when the base unit is in the problem originally, it's always just going to take one conversion factor. The one good thing about metric conversions, it's always going to be one or two. It's kind of nice. Unless you have like a derived, where you have like kilometers per second or something like that. Okay, I'm going to put this in the calculator. 9,900 times 1E2 equals. Again, my calculator is still in scientific notation. This number did only have one sig fig. So I'm getting 9 times 10 to the fifth centimoles. 
Or you could have had nine, one, two, three, four, five, 900,000 centimoles. So I've got one more problem, one more. Okay, last problem. 2.4 teraliters is how many hectoliters? 2.4 teraliters, bake my cross. Both of these had a prefix. I'm gonna make my line a little bit longer. Bring my unit immediately down. Now remember, you always have to go to the base unit. So I've gotta have liter up top. Okay, there's my first. Now what's on top's gotta to go down bottom again to keep it going diagonally. And now we're ready to go to hectoliter. Okay, let's set these up. So we've got Terra and we've got the base unit. Well, Terra's on the very top, gotta to be the biggest one. Terra's gotta to get the one. So one times 10 to the 12 liters makes one teraliter. Teraliters cancel out. And I'm ready to, for my next conversion factor. We've got hectoliter. Hecta's right here, hecto, H. And we're going to the base unit. Hecto is the biggest unit. But hecto has a two beside it, so that means one times 10 to the two liters is equal to one hectoliter. So a hectoliter is 100 liters. Our liters cancel out. We've got hectoliter on top, so we're ready to put this in the calculator. 2.4, my first number's on top, so I'm gonna multiply. One, my exponent key, 12. The very next number is on bottom, so I'm gonna divide. One, E, two, equals 2.4, same amount of sig figs, times 10 to the 10 hectoliters. I'm not even writing that out with 10 zeros, y'all. I bet your calculator automatically put that into scientific notation, even if you didn't want it to. I hope that helped. Bye, y'all.